Hey everyone, it's Dr. DeCubulus with Main Street Chiropractic and today I am joined again with by John Rizvald, PI attorney extraordinaire. And today we wanted to talk about top five mistakes that you can make when it comes to your PI case. So thanks for coming out. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, you know, this is a super important topic because there are some really important things that you can do when you're injured, especially after say a car accident, that will totally obliterate your opportunity to recover your medical bills, your damages, lost wages, those sorts of things. And they're really simple things to avoid. Yeah, definitely. And a lot of them you are in 100% control of. So it's making sure that you don't do these mistakes. So let's start off with number one. Give me your top one. Number one is your social media. You control your social media. So don't put things on social media about your accident or your injuries. Don't put things on social media shortly after the crash that would contradict the things that you're claiming uh, you're injured or the things that you're claiming in your case. For instance, I've had clients who have posted pictures of them on vacation. I think we talked about this right before and you've yep. had patients that have done the exact same thing. I've had clients who have had pictures of them surfing on vacation three weeks after an accident and they're claiming disc injuries in their neck. Well, obviously I have to drop them as a client because I have an ethical obligation to tell the truth and to be honest. And so I can't keep them as a client. Their case is ruined because clearly they're either faking it or they're fine. And so your social media is going to be used against you. Good defense lawyers, good insurance companies, even bad insurance companies can find all this stuff. If you put it out on the internet, expect that it'll be shown back to you and used against you. 100%. And the next thing, uh, one of the, the top ones I see that really just destroys the case is not following the doctor's orders. So if someone comes in, they get a diagnosis, the doctor orders X, Y, Z, whether, whether it be imaging that needs to be done, whether it be a treatment that needs to be done, whether it, it's taking off from work, whatever it is, if you don't follow those treatment protocols, then what's gonna happen is the insurance company or the other party is going to say, well, you know what? Didn't really need to have treatment, didn't really need that protocol, isn't really injured because they didn't even follow their own doctor's orders. So that just destroys a case. And while there might be um, something rare that comes up to where you, you need to, to not, you might maybe miss one visit, that's different. I'm talking if you decide to go on vacation instead of going to your doctor for two weeks or you blow off the MRI, uh, that is going to destroy your case because it's telling the doctor that, you know what, maybe maybe we don't need this imaging because you're not really that injured. It's telling the attorney that, you know what, this isn't probably a case because you're not really that injured. And it's telling the insurance company, we don't have to pay for anything because you're not injured. Exactly. I have clients ask me all the time, like, do I really need to go get an MRI? Do I really need to get an x-ray? And I tell them over and over and over again, I'm not a doctor. Listen to your doctors and do everything that they say because that's the best thing that you can do. Absolutely. Yeah, and it's, it's never a bad idea to always get checked out because the worst thing that can happen is you don't get checked out, there's something, and now we start talking about gaps in treatment, which is another issue. Uh, but before we get to that, let's talk about another one from the legal standpoint. What's another top thing, mistake that people make? Yeah, don't ever sign anything that an insurance company wants you to sign. Often, in car accident cases especially, you're going to get a call from the insurance company for the at-fault driver, and they're going to do something like, well, we'll offer you $1,000 and we'll pay for 10 visits to your doctor or 10 physical therapy visits or 10 chiropractic visits, whatever it might be. And they're going to make it sound like this is a good deal for you. You don't know how injured you are until you've seen your doctor and you've been evaluated. You don't know how injured you are when you're sitting at the scene of the crash yet. You have, might not have been checked out by an EMT. You might not have been to the ER or seen a doctor at all. You shouldn't be accepting this money. What you should understand is that they want to pay you to go away because they know that they have liability. They know they're at fault. And so before you sign anything, bring it to a lawyer. I have helped dozens upon dozens upon dozens of people who were offered $500 or $1,000 at the scene of an accident or shortly thereafter, a couple weeks after, and we've turned that $500 or $1,000 offer into hundreds of thousands of dollars. And I'm not kidding, hundreds of thousands of dollars. People are absolutely shortchanging themselves by not speaking to a lawyer and by signing things before they've had an opportunity to have it reviewed by a lawyer. Our consultations are free. Come see me. It's free. Well, yeah, it, it's, it's a great point, too, because at that point, you, have, you don't even know what injuries you've sustained. You haven't really felt everything you're going to feel because you haven't been evaluated. So what's, let's look at worst case scenario. Let's say we have a major disc herniation that needs surgery. They only offered you 500 bucks. That surgery might cost $50,000 because it's not going to be covered under your insurance plan. 
Now you're out money for an accident you didn't even cause. Absolutely. So it's just never a good idea. Um, they're not, especially if they start saying that, well, this is only good for a limited time. That's red flags, bells should be going off. This is something that you need to walk away from. Uh, you never want to put anything, uh, sign your name on anything. Absolutely. Anytime they put a time limit on it, be very wary. And you and I are going to talk uh, probably on another day or maybe even later today about the statute of limitations and how important that is. But there is not a short 30-day or two-week or one-week time limit on your cases, your claims, or your injuries. That's not how it works in Illinois, and you need to make sure you talk to a doctor and a lawyer right away. Definitely. Um, so another thing that I, I see that happens a lot of times with uh, these cases that just kind of really, really kind of destroys things and really hurts the individual is downplaying. Mm -hmm. Downplaying things. They want, it, they want to be strong. They want to not tell everything that they're feeling. And it really is detrimental for two reasons, A, for the case value, but also for them. Because when they come into my office and I ask, how are they feeling? They say they're feeling okay. And then I go in a little bit deeper. Okay, well, how is this? Let's rate this. And we go through every segment of the body and they're not giving me the real truthful answer because they don't want to feel that they're injured or that they're inhibited. They're only hurting themselves. Mm -hmm. Because A, I have to record everything that they say as truthful, unless I find otherwise. B, then I also have to base my treatment on what they're telling me and I have to match that with the exam findings. So if, if I'm finding that they're telling me they're okay, even if I'm finding something else, if they're telling me that they're not having symptoms, I can't continue to do treatment. Right. And at that point, we might have reached the maximum medical improvement and now a month or two later when they're still having the experience, they come back and say, Doc, you know what, actually I'm having this, it's too late. Yeah, yeah. That, that gap that they create in the treatment too is dangerous, like you talked about earlier. If you stop treatment because you're, you're not telling the truth to your doctor and then all of a sudden you try to come back six months later because you have serious issues, I have an impossible hill to climb there to prove to an insurance company that those two things are related. That's incredibly difficult, if not impossible. And so you're right, you really, really damage your case. I think the last thing that really, really can damage a case is a recorded statement to the insurance company. You're not under any obligation to give any statement to the insurance company about how you were injured, how the crash happened, how anything happened. In fact, don't. You know, there's an old saying on the criminal side that anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law, right? Like, yep. we all know this. We have it memorized. Um, those are your Miranda rights. But in a civil suit, that is a 1,000% true as well. The insurance company does not work for you. You are not in good hands. They are not a good neighbor. They're working against you. They're working to protect their money. They're building a case to take money out of your pocket and to make sure that your bills don't get paid. And the number one way they're going to do that is by effectively – having you sit for a sworn statement and then using your statements against you later when you eventually hire a lawyer or try to negotiate your claim, they're going to say, well, you gave this statement right after the crash and you said that you were just kind of sore. You weren't really that injured. You didn't, you're in a state of shock maybe right afterwards. Yep. And the pain doesn't appear until later, right? Pain is a tricky thing. It's not you know, instant always. Sometimes it ebbs, sometimes it flows, sometimes it appears later. And so your recorded statement is just creating damaging evidence for your case. And on that note, I just want to make sure that everyone understands, always assume the conversation is recorded. Mm -hmm. Always assume. So if you're talking to an insurance uh, adjuster, agent, whatever it might be, just assume it's, it's recorded and make sure you say as little as possible because, like you said, you're under no obligation to talk with them. So last thing I want to bring up, point, is when it comes to the pain, this is what I find is that people um, will, will have, uh, after an injury, they'll have a pain, let's say, in their low back. Mm -hmm. And then um, they'll start having pain elsewhere in their body. They don't talk about it because they don't think it's linked. And because of that, it doesn't get recorded. There's no diagnosis based on that. And then there's no treatment based on that too. And it's, it's a really big issue because there is this thing called a gating mechanism. So what your body does is it tries to create as little pain and pressure on that area that's injured as possible. So if it has to have you, let's say we have an injury to the left side of your low back, mm -hmm. it will have you bend to the right side to take that pressure away. However, in your middle back or thoracic spine, you'll bend back to the other side to keep your center of gravity so you're walking upright. So it makes sense that we would then have pain that kind of shifts around depending on what you're doing. It's all related to the original injury. But if you don't mention it, we can't look for it, we can't find it. So one thing that I like to do is I make sure that even if we only have a complaint in one area, we do a complete review of the whole body and ask specific questions because sometimes too, what happens with the body is if you have an eight out of 10 in your left knee, you don't feel the three in your right shoulder. Sure. So we gotta make sure we ask specific questions to get everything because once this starts to get better and this goes down to a two, now you feel the three 
it was always there, but because we didn't record it, you didn't mention it. If we don't know what we're doing, we can't talk about it a month or two later. Yeah, that becomes very difficult. I really think, you know, we really could talk about this topic all day. And the reason is, is because while you might be the smartest person in the room after a car accident, you're not a professional. I'm a professional negotiator and a professional trial attorney. I bring cases before juries and I negotiate every single day. And you're a doctor. I mean, we've had years and years of training to do this. And I say that to say, you can hire experts. Think of how many lawyers and how many doctors, how many experts these billion trillion dollar corporate uh, insurance companies have. They have big tall glass buildings in major cities for a reason. It's because they've got infinity dollars. If they have thousands of lawyers, you should have one. They have thousands of doctors and nurses and medical professionals who are reviewing records and looking at bills. You should have the best doctors and the best lawyers you can find. And the beautiful thing is if you work with a good PI lawyer and a good doctor, you're not paying any money out of pocket. Your health insurance is covering it. There's liens to cover it. And I work on what's called a contingency. So I only ever get paid if I win. So really, you're you have no risk whatsoever to work with people like us and you have everything to lose that is 100 percent correct so i hope that helps out just wanted to give you a couple quick pointers uh we're going to go over some more stuff later but if you have any questions you can reach out to myself or john our contact information will be below and hope to hear from you soon